I follow Barbarian slash Ancient slash Carnivore slash Primal Way of Eating. I largely do nose to tail. Um, every animal works for me, and all organs work for me. And I do dairy. I do raw dairy because unfortunately the processed dairy is processed and it's not supposed to work for our gut, and it doesn't work for my gut. The Barbarian diet, your blood group diet, biohacking, ice baths. All these things might seem like extreme choices to make for your health and your life, but all of them could be an interesting thing for you to learn in case you might actually need it to overcome so many hurdles you might face in your own health. I'm talking to Mega Gupta today. She's biohacked her life in so many interesting ways that is not the normal for most of us, but it's something which all of us should know about just in case we might need it. So it's a great episode for you to watch if you've been trying to figure out your own diet and everything else around it, and also to understand how she kind of got there from the diagnosis to the way she's been able to unravel all the issues that are there. All this and more on this episode of Take a Pause with me, Varun Dugirala. But before we go there, I want to make sure you hit subscribe and smash the bell icon and stay into my chat with Mega Gupta. Welcome to Take a Pause with me, Varun Dugirala. Um, you follow um, Barbarian Diet. Yes, now. someone. <laughs> you. Um, a, explain that, but why I've come to that is, it's it's also important to say that, you know, everyone gives one magic pill. Mm. This is the magic pill that will make you healthier, it will make your gut uh, feel better, it will make, you know, you put on muscle, etc, all that stuff. But it's very individual. Mm. The choices I make with my own diet and food could be very different from yours, and that's right. depending on what works for you versus what, what works for me. Can you talk about the choices you made on that front? Just what, how it's really, and it's how your diet has really helped your own like health and mindset as well. Right. Yes, of course. Uh, this is a very interesting thing that you brought up. And the two approaches that I would talk about, like I would say is through blood work and a gut health test, you know, just to uh, let people know that uh, people when they say, aap ye lo apne gut ke liye, aap ye khao, veg khao, non-veg khao, ye karo. I think the primary thing that the first thing that you need to do is do a blood work, a body profile and a gut microbiome test to know your gut. When you know your gut, then you'll understand ki shit, I was having the wrong thing all this while. Mm. People are like, kefir is good, kombucha is good. It might not work for some people's gut microbiome, you know. Bread is not the villain. Dairy is not the villain. It might work for your gut. But you need to know what your gut, uh, what's the word, microbiome is. And blood work will help. The other thing is intuitive living, intuitive eating. So these are two approaches to it. For me, I follow Barbarian sounds powerful. I love the word. <laughs> it's yes, it's Barbarian slash ancient slash carnivore slash primal way of eating. I largely do nose to tail. Um, every animal works for me and all organs work for me. And I do dairy. I do raw dairy because unfortunately the processed dairy is processed and it's not supposed to work for our gut and it doesn't work for my gut. So I do raw dairy. I do include some fruits and vegetables which are low GI. I would not ideally as a diabetic include as of now, carrots, beetroot, um, sweet potatoes. I'm not doing those right now. Very sweet fruits like grapes, mangoes, I do avoid right now. So this is you. This is largely what I have and of course coffee. Mm. So this is what I eat and it works for me. But it has, I have come to this conclusion through intuitive eating for years. Mm. I have uh, anyway never hurt people when it comes to my eating habits. So I have understood that this makes me bloated. This does not make me bloated. This makes me feel light. This makes me feel energetic. And that is how I approach food. And right now this is working for me. Tomorrow my gut composition. Yes, the word I was looking was uh, for composition. My gut composition might change a few months, years later. And then what I'm having now might not work. And then something else might, might work. So largely, that's how I operate. I love this term intuitive eating, right? Because I feel it also makes you focus on how you're feeling when you eat something. Mm. Like for years, I was told rice is always going to be feel very heavy. So you should eat roti. But roti would always make me feel more bloated than rice ever did. Mm. And that's where I took a call saying, one second, let me just not eat rotis. And I always felt better. Mm. Then I started kind of... And you kind of hone down, right? I'm talking, okay, white rice versus brown rice. Now, brown rice works better for me. Now, I've done like, okay, look, is, is brown rice versus millets, does that make a big difference? I realize it doesn't make a big difference. It's close enough. So, I choose between one and the other. It's, it's, and doing that, 
it's also it's also a lot of fun because hmm. you're getting to figure out how you react to different yeah. things and you also it's not like eating anything which is like oh my god i don't like eating this it's terrible hmm. everything can be made to be tasty you add the right seasoning add the right sauces add, add everything else but also the composition of things which you spoke about right can you this is entire push away from any form of animal products right um it's obviously come from a certain side of of veganism and i think will that i've always been more vegetarian in my head than i have looked at veganism because i feel some of these things you should eat mm. have you faced pushback on this front uh yes i got a lot of beef for eating beef yeah <laughs> <laughs> on social media yeah. as a hindu <laughs> and i have friends who visit me and i make steak and they all enjoy it but they don't put on put it on social media and they are all uh, um public figures you know and it always amazes me that and this is with all your respect to them i love them but they don't speak about eating beef because they're like we face backlash and we just don't want to take a chance and i'm like okay i'm the only one who's so vocal about it but i will always be vocal i will always be vocal this works for me you don't want to see me eating steak you're most welcome to unfollow me but i cannot go back to my drawing board just because you're not okay with my life so there's the unfollow button most welcome please hit it hard uh and it has happened my following did go down for a while and i kept the faith and i it was like my life is this it's not that that's a part of my life and slowly people understood yes this is her life this is what she does this is what she eats this is how she lives either you make peace with it or you can you know see what works for you um my my point with eating meat and beef is as a type 1 diabetic i tried everything i tried vegan i tried raw and vegan i tried aip which is autoimmune protocol i tried intermittent fasting i tried juicing i have actually also we were speaking about somebody who fasted for 8 9 days yeah 9 days yeah i have fasted straight up for 7 days i actually have a certificate at home for it so i have done everything hugging trees you name it i did everything and i still live by hugging trees even now but when i went to carnivore is when my body just adjusted really well to it it started putting on muscle i started feeling powerful i started feeling like i was seeing filling up from the inside and that's why by no way am i endorsing it i'm just saying this works for me you're most welcome to try it or not that also is your call so many people project their own insecurities on you by telling you what you shouldn't do mm. you know that's the interesting yeah. part yeah. and that's why i'm not saying eat this or eat that i'm saying whatever you eat eat with intention eat by listening to your intuition and another thing that i've started doing of late and it's been working for me is sometimes you know varun it's not the food that is not working for you or not working for you that is working for you or not working for you sorry it's the way you eat it we eat in a hurry these days it's our khurak it's our portion it's our food you know what i started doing is when i have food in front of me i take three deep breaths to go from flight or fight to a rested state to wake my digestive system up to absorb the food because one is the eating of it one is the absorption and one is the elimination yeah. and all three have to work in tandem so absorption is also necessary so i take 3d breaths i also bless the food because you don't know how the food is cooked you don't know what fight that person had while he was preparing your food you don't know where the food is coming from so many factors so give it your energy bring it to you tell it that may it you know nourish you the way it's actually meant to and uh, actually ideally i try not to do anything while eating but kuch na kuch ho jata hai so that sometimes you can't avoid and that's why my way of living is also very practical i understand yaar you know we all have a life we all have things and so my what i try to tell people is include exclude make it a part of your daily thing rather than saying ki ye mujhe bahar nikal kar karna hai and don't be rigid about it hmm yes everyone's talking about the gut a lot more now since you mentioned it i have to bring it up <laughs> it feels like the gut is having its its moment hmm. where everything from products to conversations to second brain to everything else right hmm. what have you realized about gut health oh my god In, that's a long You've going touched. down a major, major rabbit yes. hole yes it's a my god where do i start i'm so blessed that i have a gut 
because it's talking to me continuously mm. you know i don't have to listen to anybody else it's here guiding me every single moment of my life and that's why we have these words gut instinct um my gut is saying you know mm. gut feeling yeah. butterflies in the stomach they are all proper emotions that are in the stomach i uh, last week did this uh, course on um, animal communication mm. i'm actually a certified animal communicator oh. and why i bring this up is because our teacher who's apparently the best in india i shouldn't say apparently she is the best in india she could not focus more on the gut mm. and what is the communication of what is the connection between animal communication and gut but that's the beauty like you can talk to animals through your gut you can talk to how you can talk to animals through your gut because everything is communicating varun everything is if we are just centered enough to actually stop and listen through our gut how interesting is that it blows my mind every time i think about it so how through our gut through being centered through being aligned through being focused and silent enough to would you say that's because when our gut is let's say feeling unhealthy feeling bloated everything else you are focused so much on those feelings that you can't focus on other things do you right. think that also is a large part of of just generally why this is so core because there is the health part and then there's also the part of once it's healthy what it can do for you yes do you say it's because you focus so much on oh i'm feeling bloated today um, everyone talks about their uh, bodily fluids coming out and what's been stuck in constipation everything else so it's always that conversation because and then you're only focusing on that but when that is actually opened out do you feel that's where actually the it moves from being internal to seeing how you can kind of externally look at things and and use that yes because when our gut is not healthy our gut speaks to us and it's saying listen i need attention and usually and largely when the gut is not healthy it is a, a sign of something else not being aligned in your body mm. um and so the gut is calling for attention and when we heal the gut we are more aligned with everything else our own health and everything around us so that's a beautiful way the gut is a very it's a proper alive it's it's a different it's an entity on its own asking for attention where it needs and when you give it that love it will open up a world for you which you can't even imagine like you wouldn't even imagine so yes the gut is very important and a lot of focus now has is being uh, put on the gut because actually if you think about it it was there right from the start but somewhere we lost that wisdom we stopped giving it attention luckily um being born as indians we already had the knowledge through ayurveda through tantra through yoga through uh, so many ancient healing modalities that we have homeopathy yeah but we stop giving it attention we got lost in the fmcg world today if you don't put this ointment or this lotion or this skin care or this body scrub you know you're missing out you're not using a diabetic toothpaste please like are you serious like diabetic toothpaste like is that how you're going to attack us being the diabetic capital of the world you know because it's playing on our emotions ki agar maine ye use nahi kiya maine mere chacha ko ye nahi diya maine mere mama ko ye nahi diya to i'm not it this might help them that's emotion that's emotional atyachar actually so um, we we fall for it but if we put all the noise aside and focus on the innate wisdom of nature mm. and our own body we don't need any of these one of the re- this whole conversation on gut health also kind of comes towards push people pushing for let's say you need to have a plant based diet it's easier for your gut to digest it um you shouldn't have milk products meat etc it's not a one size fits all hmm. is what my belief has always been it's very individual in that sense and what it also does when you start to make shifts in your life is that the stuff you have to do physically hmm but there's so much more mental stuff you have to deal with right and even after you made those choices and this is something which we were talking about before we started this podcast as well is that this is balance you have to mm. create in your own head because there's your health there is your career there is also like it's family and this you know friends etc and there's also stuff you want to do beyond all of these as yes. well and when 
for a lot of people i know that if for you to look at your health differently from how everybody else seems to it feels like okay one second to do all of these things will i have to sacrifice how i function let's say in my career or function in with my health or my family and that again becomes a question of let's like mental balance right what are your thoughts on that how how do you how does one balance everything out i think uh, the one thing would be if you can't beat them join them so and that should be the other way around like in your case mm-hmm. like there are certain things you want to do like your mom this is such a beautiful thing your mom is a yoga practitioner and she put you in the habit of breath work mm-hmm. right yeah. and so now you don't know life without it no and so to do whatever you <clears throat> pass on to your kids at such an early age is something that they will grow with in life whether that's using a tongue cleaner or breath work or just practicing asanas so the way to have a beautiful marriage in all of this is make that a lifestyle right from the word go you know so now your reward is not a pizza or a burger or that chocolate your reward is a steak or you know a fruit bowl or a buddha bowl and we decorate it together and we eat it together you know in peace so we <clears throat> make those healthy habits so much a part of our lifestyle and our family's lifestyle that now it no longer is an is a solitary activity it becomes a family activity group activity and so you no longer feel like this is something i have to do separately of course there will still be some practices like today maybe your children might not be able to go to the gym and do a push day or a pull day so that's something and that's great because you do need that downtime to decompress from everything that you're facing in the day yeah a lot of it should be included within the family and within yourself and a lot of it can be practiced separately and then it will no longer feel like it's a separate thing that i need to do for myself i pick up from one thing you just said that is that often our rewards are oh i can have something unhealthy because i've been so healthy like uh, throughout the week so been so healthy throughout the week so now i'll go have that you know really deep fried food or i'll just go and like not do any physical activity for a day or which is sometimes good because your body needs to rest as well but if you actually say your rewards are things that also help you then you it's not like it's not like you're doing something and then oh my god now i finally get to do this hmm. versus you're saying no one second this is just part of my life hmm. some things are a little more maybe restrictive the other ones are also like healthy it's not like you have to make unhealthy your reward because hmm. then unhealthy always feels like the one thing that you're missing out hmm. on that's actually very true i i i'm a i'm full honesty i'm that person who will fridays saturdays i will have one you give me a tub of ice cream i will eat the entire <laughs> tub of ice cream um or about literally 4 days ago i was in a friend's house and i felt like eating a gulab jamun i ordered a box i ate six gulab jamuns i am that person right so i still struggle with that which is why when i'm saying this i'm verbalizing i'm trying to tell myself as well because mm. it's like oh i'm i'm holding off of anything sweet because i have a sweet tooth so i have a chance let's eat all mm. there's no like leaving any mm. behind but that's where the problem comes This is very interesting because I'm going to just first say some keywords over mm. here. A prisoner of your own image <laughs> and freedom and negotiation and twisted. Okay. Now the and reward which you've already mentioned. Now the beauty of English language is the word twisted mm. has many meanings. Mm. But the minute I say this person is twisted it's always just taken in a negative manner. the me- the minute we say reward it's taken like oh aaj to i'm going to drink or i'm going to have those gulab jamuns the minute we say freedom you know the minute we say um negotiation why do we have to negotiate with our health question 1 why is reward only for the spoiling of our health like for me a reward the day i feel like i'm going to reward myself i promise you varun like i go and eat another steak like my reward is two steaks yeah. more butter yeah. so what is reward you know we when we say dare i say oh let's go play to a guy because it's going to be taken in a negative manner but all i'm saying is let's go play in the sense let's get to the beach let's get the dogs out let's you know do these things but the minute we've twisted some words in such a manner some phrases in such a manner that unfortunately saying them is no longer safe mm. you know so uh as long as we can change the narrative in our head and that intention will then move on to our kids and our family yeah. and it it is possible i am doing that with my family it is a work in progress but i can see changes you know yeah. because when you decide to do this nobody can stop you from doing the right thing 
नो बडी इफ यू डिसाइड टू डू इट यू नो इफ वी स्टॉप बींग अ प्रिजन ऑफ आर ओन इमेज इट्स हैपन विद मी आई फॉलो ट्री टू इट आई एम लाइक मैं तो ऐसी हूँ आई एम अ टॉयर एंड आई एम अ स्टबन पर्सन एंड यू हैव टू लिव विद इट इट डजन वर्क लाइक दैट यू नो वन डे पीपल विल टॉलरेट यू द सेकेंड द थर्ड डे दिल से प्लीज वी आर डन सो इट डजन वर्क सो यू रियली हैव टू सिट डाउन एंड थिंक um why you're doing that and what is the real reason what is the real reason that you wanted to sit and have those gulab jamuns are you going through an emotion which you're covering up with this mm. it's a little deep and woo woo no, but no, you know is. it's interesting if we really sit and think about it we what is anger really it's basically an emotion that is masking some other deep emotion within you sadness or grief or pain or something like that yeah. so having those gulab jamuns you are doing so well like i look at you you look no way close to the age you've told me you are you know really athletic looking and and i also understand the pain and you know when people are like why are you weighing your food you it's so easy for you to just keep losing but putting on is actually more difficult than losing yeah and putting on the right way right because yes. you can put on weight easily but yeah. to put on the right kind of like just yesterday someone in the gym was like Oh, why are you losing so much muscle? I'm like, no, I'm just leaning out because I I realized I was feeling a little more bloated, so I'm leaning out. But it's that you, to not let what people are saying affect you, and yet make the right choice. Yes, is the toughest thing to do, especially yes. in this in this scenario more than any other. Yes, it's, it's all health is so much of a visual medium as much as it is internal yes. because it's looking at yourself in the mirror and that's why I hate the weighing scale. I've never looked at the weighing scale. I I've always like I've it's been years we have one at home. I just don't get on it. I'm like I, that's I don't want to weigh myself and see oh because I used to have that. Oh because you had those things when you were a kid saying if you weigh if your height is this much your weight needs to be this much. Hmm. And I would always be below. Hmm. I was trying okay let me put on this weight. I did everything once got but when I got to what was supposed to be my ideal weight hmm. I felt so bloated and I felt so like lethargic all the time I slim back down and I was fine so we always get stuck to yeah and that's why this is really brave of you like in spite of everything you were still weighing your food where you wanted to put weight on because that like you rightly said you know putting on also is an art it's not just ki khao and put it on so that's you still you you have gone way beyond anybody ever could in terms of bettering their health and i've also understood this about people that uh, fortunately or unfortunately they operate from their level of consciousness mm. it's their journey yeah. and where they are at they'll give you advice or comments from that space any girlfriend of mine going through a divorce will give me an advice that you should never be with boys and don't have that relationship but that's coming from her own experience yeah. of her uh, relationship with men yeah. so we have to hear it but we also have to learn to filter it and as long as we can do that we have that filter in our an inbuilt filter and do intuitive living where we are so in tune with our own intuition and our own centering that then it won't mm. that it won't matter what mm. they say and that's that's like i'm so happy to know this that you know you are like you know that they yeah. say that and you know how to like what's the word push it out it it's about and i've worked on it it's taken some amount of work and i'm still like i would say on, on my journey of just you said the word centering right mm. it's so i feel it's also difficult to explain centering to many people but mm. you know it when you are mm. but to come to that form of centering you have to be very like you come to point of self awareness saying this is my So I'm not in pros and cons. These are the this this is what's on my weighing scale. This is what will take me off center. Hmm. Like for me, I know sugar is one. Um, I know having a drink can be an off center experience. I enjoy a drink, which I won't give up on it. But I know beyond which point it becomes takes me off center. You know, really take. So I have a list of those, and over time I just keep adding to them, saying these are things. So keep an eye on it. Doesn't mean I improve in all of them. I fall off the wagon on many of these often enough. But at least I know that these are my. um won't i don't want to use the word vices these are things that take me off that's yeah great yeah and it's important to just track those yes and another thing i'd like to add to this is like you said uh, that you have a tendency to fall off the wagon mm. once in a while it's okay yeah. you know we're humans the one rule that i try to follow is never do the same thing twice in a row aapne ek din gym agar miss kar diya hai agle din aap chale jao yeah तो दो दिन अगर क्या वो तीसरे दिन जाने में बहुत एफर्ट लगती है 
और तीसरा दिन एक हफ्ता हो जाता है इजीली देयर इज नो वे इट्स गोइंग टू गो आई फॉलो दिस रूल एंड आई सी आई हैव सीन दैट इट वर्क्स फॉर मी सो आई एम शेयरिंग दिस टिप सी इफ इट वर्क्स फॉर यू दैट यू नो नेवर डू द सेम थिंग ट्वाइस इन अ रो एंड इट्स ऑफ कोर्स योर ट्रैवलिंग इन समथिंग बट इट वर्क्स एंड सेंटरिंग इट्स अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग थिंग राइट इट्स इट्स आई गेट अ हाई when i know what is centering me and what's not centering me because with every information that my gut is telling me i'm bringing myself more and more to that center with the process of elimination first and then the process of addition and the beauty of this centering is it's never going to be the same your entire life yeah. today this centers you tomorrow something else will center you today something that centered you is not going to send may not center you tomorrow yeah. so this intuitive living is the way to go i think even where your nutrition is concerned where your movement is concerned in anything in fact not just these two factors anything intuitive living is the answer today if you don't feel like going and lifting heavy go for a walk on the beach listen to that intuition because your body is saying something to you and your gut is really your second brain and it's telling you what to do here's what i've been fascinated by said biohacking is suddenly this thing that everyone's talking about across the world but in many ways you can also alienate people by saying okay my this seems like a lot i only have so much going on in my life how can <laughs> i do this also but you at some point have kind of showcased it as a normal part of your life you're not showing this as a separate thing i want to kind of start off by saying that ever since you start to look at your own body and health and what you eat and how you function differently what's been the biggest change you've seen in gent in general um i'm going to say this and i don't know if it will make sense i'll elaborate i feel filled up i feel powerful i feel strong i feel capable i feel the strength so i'll rewind just a bit i got diagnosed with type 1 diabetes about 7 8 years ago and i struggled with everything with energy levels with putting muscle on with uh just everything feeling constant hunger feeling the highs and the lows of glucose and the highs and the lows of you know the mental trauma of it all um biohacking made me fill my body up i could feel ki it was khokla no longer it was not empty it was not hollow and that was the biggest change i felt vital again i felt life force in me again i asked you that because you know to get diagnosed at the time when you did you were also see you know you had an acting career you were focused on you were in the bombay grind and then that also led you down a path to making certain choices and i think we're in an interesting time because i feel the last 2 years 3 years ever since covid happened made people really question not just how they live their life but what they live their life for and almost came down to the basic fundamentals right okay what you eat how you live um who do you spend your time with so we suddenly all went back saying what's like i might not have that much time if something like this happens again which in all probability there will be more and more of these things in the years to come then how am i choosing to live in the best possible way and so made us all choose things but for you it was almost like a shift because of something that already happened to you hmm. at which point from the time you got diagnosed did you see a no once again this is i need to make a bigger shift hmm. because there would be have been a period of of you just looking at it and saying No, why this happened to me? To you no, know, you're going through all stages of, hmm. of grief. Right? You're going from denial to yes. anger to everything else. So, at which point did you actually make this change? Uh, when I felt that only I can help myself, it sounds very filmy, but it came to a point where I'm like, I need to take charge. Otherwise, it's going to go downhill. And I had also recently, at that point, lost my father. and it was way overnight and like all couples they were planning their retirement they were planning we are going to build a farm here and then i'm going to milk this cow and when neelam my wife my mom asks me to go run errands i'm going to go on my bike you know in this farm life and nothing happened because he was gone in a second and then i realized that there is never work 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 and then retire and mm-hmm. then enjoy your life you have to enjoy it now in this second you have to do what you got to do now and there is no retirement you know it might happen it might not happen and if you want to make something possible it has to be now 
and uh, i just decided to get up and take charge i was relying on too many people because i was like i was also a prisoner of my own image i was like i am not going to count calories i am not going to look at my food as a math table or anything but i understood i don't have to do that yeah. and i don't have to rely on other people to help me do that count there is a certain lifestyle i can live which will let me be healthy without having to count carbs or calories so taking matter in my own hands and deciding that i have to take charge because this is going to do, go downhill if i don't and move cities if i need to and i did that i just decided to take charge it's also something you just said is that we we look at a lot of the things we feel are difficult in making those choices as almost like okay this is the reason why i'm not choosing like like the counting one right well everybody has sat down and said because i did count there was a time in my life where i had that you know everyone had that who has ever thought about it has had bought that on small weighing mm. scale thing at home and everything i would eat at put in there and i feel that after like a month i'm like i can't do this why do i, I don't have to do it because my general body type has always been someone who doesn't put on weight i lose weight easily i lose muscle easily so it's like that's not a problem you have a good problem you also have people saying around you know even struggling to lose weight and i'm the one person around who's struggling to put on everyone tells you it's not a problem why are you weighing your calories and so every time there was a reason for me to say this is why i don't have to but when you're talking i'm think what is minister about lifestyle it's important to look at this as being a part of your life and not something that's taking away from mm. your life right was it like that was it at point saying this is, this is a part of my life it doesn't have to be oh my god my life's going to be even lesser because this is i have to do all these things for me it works because like i'm a lazy human <laughs> So for me my reason was that I was like I am already so lazy I cannot include anything in my lifestyle which will make me do more work because I'm not going to do it as a lazy human. So I always try to find shortcuts. I'll be honest and that actually works for me because then what I do is I don't for for an example I will not take my dogs for a walk to just baju me every day. At least twice or thrice uh, in the week I will take them to the beach. So for me that becomes my workout that becomes my grounding that becomes their activity so it's habit stacking you include it and inculcate it in your life in such a beautiful manner that you don't feel like you are making the extra effort like now living in a city like bombay <clears throat> you have long distance travels right yeah what you can do is listen to a podcast when you're driving so that's habit stacking so for me i try to uh, layer my habits in a way that they are not something that i have to make an effort for largely like i might be working out and i might listen to a podcast so habit stacking works very well for something like that that's it actually haven't heard of using habit stacking like that people always say that you got to bring them all together but mm. you said this is something you have to do anyway hmm just add on top of that so it becomes a part of that experience hmm. it's like I have a standard joke and maybe I've been habit stacking without realizing it is exactly. that Exactly. Every morning I have to wake up early in the morning hmm. to uh, before everybody else wakes up because um I clean up whatever mess my dogs have made. I make sure they get their morning fruit and then I move on to like setting things in order before I wake up my daughter for school. Hmm. But that sequence of things I've just added one breathing exercise in the morning hmm. because I realized I have about a 5 10 minute window there. and and my mother's a yoga practitioner and been a teacher so she taught me a, a you know basic step by step pranayama so i've just been doing that and that's habit stacking cuz i think yes. that's it's i mean we're doing this i mean we're waking up yeah so how how did you go about setting your own um almost uh, re rejigging your life rejigging as in when you when you decided to, okay once again more to the city i'm going to biohack my life i'm going to add all these elements for someone who's saying at that stage of i want to do these hmm. where do you start where do you start wow where do you start where do you start it just i don't know when it started i don't know how it started for me it was anyway never so black and white it was not like i was living a very contrast filled life in bombay like i was living in bombay in bandra right in the hub of you know where all the action is happening but i still went to sleep at 9 o'clock hmm you know which is exactly what i do in goa so for me it was never the external environment having said that moving to goa helped because mm. the external environment also improved yeah. there is no mental noise there are less people there is less less humaning like mm. i call it 
there's more sunshine more uh, nature more sand and everything so uh, when did it start i don't know actually i don't know because it started in my childhood even when i did not realize it today if i don't use a tongue cleaner in the morning mm. i feel very incomplete same you yeah be- and that's because i saw my father doing it every morning and so now if i don't do it like you you understand the feeling yeah, right yeah, yeah. <laughs> if any someone hasn't used a, a legit tongue cleaner in the morning then it's <laughs> they don't know what they're missing <laughs> yeah so it started in my childhood it started with habits that i picked up because as a family we did those like i just was never in the habit of sleeping late and waking up late because as a family we just did not do it so i think if you ask me where did it start it started by being born to these amazing parents that i was born to what i also wanted to ask you about was you also spent a fair amount of time in the biohacking community globally hmm what do you feel people have realized about this element internationally that we still haven't figured out many of us living modern urban lifestyles in 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 india what do we still need to kind of understand but where this entire movement is kind of going what a brilliant question yeah thank you yeah like nobody's asked me that and it's very interesting because uh, in india we are so stuck with our rituals and religion and culture that we don't know what we were born to do we have kind of sort of lost the beauty of hunters and gatherers primal living what actually an ecosystem is how it really works people don't understand that you can grow a pig on your farm with a lot of love and then kill it and eat it they are like don't you love animals is that what you would do to your own pig but that's the cycle of life that's what the pig was meant to do oh my god so this animal communication course that i did uh the lady who taught us this she had a beautiful experience i'll just quickly touch upon it she spoke about how she spoke to a pig who was rejoicing and she was like and she had also heard in the village that she the pig is going to be slaughtered today so uh is giving me goosebumps so she spoke to the pig and she was like you're going to get cut today and you're here dancing and frolicking and everything she's like are you crazy they fed me so well for 9 months i had the best life so how does it matter that they're going to cut me today you know looking at different sides of the story knowing you know there are so many layers to it that we have kind of lost in india because we are so overshadowed by the crab mentality where we want to bring each other down and ki mai ye nahi kar sakti to tune ye kyu kiya mai to kha hi nahi sakti beef to tu kyu kha rahi hai you know just being so busy shunning people down putting people down not being in a mentality of you do you you know and let me do me and letting culture and religion come in the way of what really we are meant to do yeah and also there's been you know when you said primal living as well if you look at all everything from even physical activities right um think about a uh, cold plunge mm. think about a sauna these are all stuff you had in physical spaces right a cold plunge is basically something which you'd have people would jump into like an ice lake and just get recovery from that and a sauna was near hot springs if i remember right and we've all had that in different ways so we have like saunas and and baths and all that stuff and if you look at like you know old ancient um you know even like visuals of how they used to be the spaces you'd have community spaces people kind of come together for that but now it's become like you know it's a it's a global thing you get get an ice pack and put it in there and stuff like that um, i still cannot do a nice bath we are going to change that now I cannot you i are the, a prisoner of your image varun <laughs> the maximum i can do i have <laughs> is that and i someone gave me a great like it's a mini hack it works for me is i have a hot shower at the end of my hot shower i switch off the hot water that for me is my cold plunge because this cold water coming on me cuz i was i grew up in like so where i'm from um kakinada summers would be like 40 40 60 degrees uh, most times and i would still take a hot water bath then oh yeah so i am that person so you want <laughs> me to go person. the other side <laughs> to like really cold ice i'm like no way like <laughs> hell come on let's challenge let's... i can't get into a beach if like the atlantic and the pacific oceans which are so cold i put my toe in i am like no chance like cannot okay so let's do this for mm. the next one month mm. 
like no hot to cold only cool hmm that i could do let's do i could that. do just cold okay fine let's do this like next one september. month just september whole yeah. of september i only have a cold water shower I don't get. I I have. This is a standing joke. I'm putting this on record because I have some friends who watch this. Friends call me. They call me getting into a regular swimming pool, tea bagging, because I go in like little, little, little. Almost <laughs> like how you're dipping bagging. a tea bag into. I'm <laughs> going slowly in there. I don't fully go in because I'm like, well, let the temperature soak in and all that stuff. Uh, so for that person to say, I will even consider this. Okay, fine. I don't want to like. Done. I'm not putting, let's shake on it. Let's shake on it. Done. Not a prisoner of my own. Yes. But it's also like. It's also fun to challenge yourself. Yes. Right? Like one of my favorite. Um, so stoicism became a strong part of my headspace over the last couple of years. Mm. So one of my favorite quotes from stoicism is by Seneca. He says, "You need to challenge your body so that it's not disobedient to the mind, because you're only pushing your body forward. You're only pushing it to like you know. Why do you want to run like a five k? Why do you or a ten k or a marathon? Why do you want to like?" Lift heavier is at some point. If you're training your body to have that discipline and be able to take challenges, then over time helps your mind overcome its own boundaries and its own challenges. And I've always found that to be like something to keep telling myself whenever I ask myself, "Why am I doing? Hmm. Why am I focused on fitness as much as I am now?" Then compared to when I was like in my early thirties, it's because I just I think that challenge really helps changes how you look at your own head. Also, why I work out in the morning because I just feel like you start your day with that kind of headspace. Hmm. I think you challenge yourself too in recent times, which has really paid off. Yes, hundred percent, all the time. For me, one important and major way to for growth in every aspect, so in every aspect of life, is through a challenge. I need a challenge to grow. I need that to happen, and that's why cold plunging is not just physical. It's not just muscle recovery, and you know. uh taking care of your soreness and inflammation it's very mental and it's like you wake up in the morning you do that cold plunge you feel like you can do anything in the day because you've tackled the most difficult task for yourself right and that's where that's why cold plunging is so beneficial and then of course it makes your mind a lot more alert it's actually a lot more potent and stimulating than cocaine as well you know so there's a reason for that and i love a good challenge i am constantly looking for challenges now there's a difference over here pehle mujhe lagta tha ki you have to go through a lot of challenges and a lot of struggles to finally be rewarded with something because that's what we were yeah, taught yeah. ki bahut mehnat karo bahut suffer karo tabhi tumhe ja ke uska fal milega yeah so i've changed that narrative in my head now i'm no longer that person i used to be that person but i still love a good challenge so that it can stimulate me to uh, keep me awake alert excited I recently started off-roading, and I was doing um, what obstacles that like seasoned off-roaders have been doing, and the car. I it was so rigged that no matter what I did, it would keep me safe. So that was my last challenge. I have been doing cold plunges in the sauna and everything for a while. I do think now the next thing I would like to you know do is a. Uh, really good trek like maybe everest base camp or something i need those challenges another challenging thing i did was when i got diagnosed with type 1 diabetes a top endocrinologist in bombay in bandra told me ki beta ab to aap gaadi chalana band kar do <laughs> he was like you'll die any time you'll get a sugar low any time you'll die and i looked at him and i'm like wow you know you are sitting in a position of power and today you think you can say that to me and get away with it if there was and avla nari from bhopal or indore she would hear that and not touch the steering wheel ever again and no human should ever 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 tell you what you can do and cannot do even a medical report for that matter today type 1 diabetes on paper says cannot be healed but why and how can a medical report tell me what my pancreas can or cannot do so he told me this and i came out of his clinic and i'm like this can't happen he can't say that to me he can't bloody say that to anybody my father taught my elder sister and i how to swim and drive as soon as i bodies our bodies could you know reach the clutch and everything he taught us that because he said girls or anybody should not be dependent on anybody for these life saving skills you know and no doctor forget like anybody not even a doctor should ever say that to anybody he should empower me that okay let's make you more capable but he did not 
and so the very next day i took the car out and i drove from bombay to goa all alone and i stayed in bomb in goa for a couple of days and i came back and i went outside his clinic and i you know i i there were so many emotions going through me like anger frustration like sadness that people of position of power do this is not done i did not do anything i did not because again it was my own success and it was not about i actually should just go and tell him maybe in this <laughs> trip i should go and tell him <laughs> listen i did that then please don't say that to anybody ever so um, yeah that was the challenge i overcame and like that's why i say that everything is a very internal weather thing it's not an external thing you have to know where you are at with things and your centering it's it's also about you i think you've spoken about this before if i remember right you were on ashton's podcast and you, you spoke about affirmations and there's also manifestation which kind of comes and it's all and all of these are in many ways you telling yourself that this is something that you're going to do and if if you don't do that you can fall down any slope i feel that often times uh, when someone telling you okay you can't do this now becomes a fact that if you have lost hope this is Hmm. But hope is something. There's something beautiful about hope. There's something beautiful. I don't even say hope is also not like oh, I'm hoping it'll happen. I'm saying if you don't have that, you know, that that fire burning inside, then you know that's anyway going to go down. Hmm. But if you turn around and say no, I'm saying this is how I believe it's going to be, or this is how I want to make my headspace be, then you find a way to move in that direction. and at some point you forget about that goal you set yourself also it doesn't like it might not even matter how long you are driving but the fact that you said no i am going to drive hmm. and that's more important for empowering you than just how long are you driving right right and it, sometimes we forget that we again like terms like affirmations manifestation all become like oh, marketing this is all woo woo huh. doesn't really work <laughs> but again it's, it's more practice for your own internal part like i think centering is the is the commonality in the our entire conversation today but yes. it's just that it just helps you doing all of that stuff that's so true that's so true there is there's there's a reason and logic behind this these are just coming in like for ex- for example the turmeric latte in the us is becoming big now but we've been doing that for years and years like since ancient times similarly all these concepts like affirmations and manifestations have been there for a long time they are just getting these beautiful words now and they're coming out in the open we have been chanting since that's mantras have yeah. been yeah they are all they all have a vibration that work for us you know animals have been doing that they literally purr p u w r you know cats purr because they that's their way of healing themselves in fact cats come and sit on us and purr at our but in a particular body part which they want to heal nature is very intelligent animals are very intelligent we don't even know how to tune into that intelligence not right now not yet so yes affirmations and manifestations have been there since age old times and we are just coming bringing them to light now and they really do work like now why i was smiling when you were saying that was because i suddenly went back to mr amir khan going like all is well all is well all is well <laughs> you know it's there's a logic to it you tell your heart and it will believe it sometimes we think of an accident or an incident which caused us a lot of pain and we think of it do you know our body actually goes through that pain and that trauma while we are even thinking of it you know there's a reason why we look at a pizza slice or steak and just salivate because our body knows it's intelligent we think we look through our senses and it really happens that's me and, and the gulab jamun <laughs> <laughs> freeze now if you want a bitch <laughs> so you know all our senses are tuned to and that's why even food like i can never date a man who would be a vegetarian now i'm very clear because <laughs> for me cooking is with all my senses looking at the meat marinating it hearing it watching it sizzle everything smelling it so yeah through senses and affirmations and manifestations they really do work and again all of these add up like we spoken about a lot through the chat about how to center you but life always throws stuff at you that again takes you off center it pulls you off balance you know you live in goa you you know you found an environment in a space where you being able to find that center but let's say you come to bombay and suddenly you back in the hecticness of the, all of this and does that take you off center does that push you off balance and and you have to kind of find a way to bring yourself back it did earlier when i used to come to bombay because the contrast was so high 
that I in uh, Goa I was all shanti shanti and Bombay just felt like very loud. And uh, again, very interesting question, yeah, because like this now, well, it was like this. Now it's slowly come like this. So now Bombay and Goa will Goa still feels slightly better, but they're pretty much right there. I'll tell you why, because again, my internal environment, I'm so shant. Like you know, nothing bothers me. Of course, I still go off center with some things, but very few things have that power. Like my mom can put me off center, <laughs> you know, <laughs> when I want her to care for her health and she doesn't like it. I'm like I'm telling the whole world to take care and you don't listen to me. <laughs> Leave <Yeah>. the paratha. <laughs> so uh, these things put me off center. Yeah. Very few things which have the power yeah. to put me off center. Uh, but in Goa also, it has its own struggles, yeah, Varun. It's not easy to live in Goa. Today, if I have to drive five kilometers, I have to drive five kilometers. And Bombay pampers you that way. You want one discipline also, it'll come up in two minutes. So Goa has its struggle, and on a daily basis, I have my struggles. I live in the jungle. I have two very hyperactive kids, the doggos. So there's always something to be handled, but it's largely the internal environment. that i have been able to work on through my daily rituals and protocols and practices that keep me centered the beauty of being centered and not centered i have understood is you will go off centered because life will throw curve balls with you you can do everything right and then somebody in your family will fall ill and you you know god forbid but you you it will need your attention it will need all of your focus in different ways it's not about not going off center it's about how soon you know you bring yourself back to the center and you can't jolt yourself back you have to again take small steps takes, and bring yourself back it does that's also a beautiful journey you know yeah yeah because it's a, a i always felt like life is a seesaw right it's never a it's never flat you're always like you, you're swinging two sides you're just figuring a way to kind of balance that whole yeah. thing out i was telling this to my daughter the other day because she's like um, talking to me about something and i said you know you realize that it's never is going to be like flat and i was trying to give her the seesaw analogy i don't i don't know how much she got how old is she she's 6 So she's like sure some she time done. Mm. You know she's going to remember all this, right? Hopefully. I'm telling you as a girl and a daughter and to everybody who's watching this, the most beautiful relationship on this planet is that of a father and a daughter. It's not the mother and the son, it's not the siblings, it's not partners, it's not name it whatever. The most beautiful relationship on this planet is that of a father and daughter. And As a daughter, I can tell you, she will remember everything you say to her, whether she's two years old or six years old. I mean, yeah, कुछ कुछ भूल जाएगी obviously memory, but largely don't underestimate her. No, no, not at all, not at all. <laughs> Now that I have a son, I also realize that I'll feel similarly. But with him, I think I'm a lot more casual and like <laughs> See, play around with him. With the daughter, I'm a lot more protective, and I'm I'm there yeah. and all that stuff. You know, through the last many years, has there been a piece of advice you've gotten that really stuck with you? I can't think of any what's the word like any big moment mm. in that way it's amazing i i kind of try to find lessons and advice in mundane moments you know uh it could be my cab person it could be the lift guy it could be and aajkal to i don't know what woo woo phase i am in everything seems to have a double meaning like like the other day i was at the gym i found it in a dumbbell <laughs> the other day i was in the gym and it said please put the weights back where they're supposed to be and i'm putting the weight back and i'm like yeah man this weight is not for me to take home yeah you know sorry it sounds so woo, everything has its place yeah yeah like and everything has its place that's one but what i took back that day was other people's weight is not mine to carry any sort of weight in fact is not mine to carry so i found that in the gym on that sticker so I find it in mundane moments and I'll give myself the bandwidth to process these things. These days unfortunately hum log ko ek bhi minute beech mein milta hai na humne cappuccino ka order diya Starbucks mein now we have to wait to hum log seedha phone nikal ke we start you know scrolling or replying or like feeling like we're so important but that's where the magic happens in those blank mundane moments keep the phone in your pocket and place that order and just look around like sit you know think watch like just see things it's okay to be bored yeah and that's where downloads come so that's where the real advice comes so yeah i i couldn't agree more this is one of the things i've been trying to do for a while like one of the reasons why i've stopped wearing like a fitness tracker that shows me data all the time is because the tendency was always look at it now i literally wear one which i can only look at if i open my phone and open yes. that app and it shows me the data so 
the less things you can kind of grab and stare at uh, or keep yourself away from it's the better and um, you know this conversation can go on and on but um, i want to leave more for us to do a part 2 at some point of time <laughs> uh soon enough is what i see but thank you so much for doing this thank you so wow. much for coming on the show thank you arun thank you i look forward to part 2 but this was a lot of fun you know this conversation with you actually um was very enlightening for me because i said a few things which i had not really verbalized in my own head That's so lovely. thank you very much mm-hmm.